How's it going everyone? My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. And we're the founders of Wealth Nation. In our last video, um, of course, we're doing the Becoming Your Own Banker series. Um, in the last video, we covered on page 17 and 18 how to create a banking system like the one you already know about. And Nelson Nash uh, talked about some of the different things that banks were doing that we should really start thinking about. And one of those things uh, he called was the biggest con game in the world, mm -hmm. the world's largest con game, and that is fractional reserve banking. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the example that Nelson Nash shared with us, and then we're going to show you a brief little uh, uh, presentation or illustration of what that actually looks like. Yeah, so I'm going to walk you through the fractional banking system and how it works and then also how the banks make money. And I'm going to do that through showing you on my computer so that you can follow along. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to go over how fractional banking works and it's very, very simple. So I want you to think about your deposits. For every single dollar you deposit into the bank, the bank can lend $10 based off of your $1 deposit. So we always like to ask the question, if you deposit $1 and then that produces $10 worth of lending capital for the bank, where did the $9 go? Well, we like to consider that funny money because that money is actually not there. So when we take it a step further as far as how the banks work, what we're going to do right now is we're just going to pretend that you have deposited $10,000 into the bank. And let's say that the bank is super generous and they're giving you 4% for keeping your money in the bank. Now, I know this isn't happening, but just bear with me for this example. So remember from the previous slide, I said if you deposit $1 into the bank, the bank can lend $10. So if you deposit $10,000 into the bank, the bank can lend 10 times the amount. So now $10,000 now is $100,000 to the bank, $100,000 worth of capital that the banks can lend out. So they're going to take your deposit and now they're going to lend it out to someone who has now entered the bank and says, hey, I need a mortgage. They're going to charge that individual 7%. And how does the bank get their money back from that mortgage? They get that money back in the form of mortgage payments. Every single month, that money comes back in principal and interest. And so the bank collects cash flow every single month. Now, just stop and think about this for a second. Your deposit into the bank, is it a liability or an asset to the bank? I'll ask that one more time. When you deposit money into the bank, does the bank see your deposits as a liability or an asset? Many people say an asset because it's money, it's cash, but it's quite the contrary. It's actually a liability. Your deposits into the bank are a liability. Why? Because the bank owes you that money back. They have to give you your money back plus the interest that they promised you for keeping it in the bank. So to them, it's a liability. But what the banks do is they turn your liability into an asset by now lending out that money. So they flipped your money to make more money. Banks are in the money business. They know how to move some money. And don't you ever forget that. The banks are a business and they have to profit just as much as the next person. So going back to this example, your deposit of $10,000 allowed the bank to now lend $100,000 with fractional banking. So the bank is getting that money back, principal and interest every single month. Now let me ask you this. Do you think the bank is sitting on those mortgage payments? The answer is no. They're lending that money out to someone who needs a car. And let's say they charge them 8%. How does the bank get that money back? Every single month, they charge that person principal and interest, and it comes back every single month like clockwork. And they're not going to sit on that money. They're going to keep turning it. They're going to send those car payments out to someone who needs a house remodel at 9%, and that money comes back in every single month, principal and interest, and they turn that money over again to someone who needs a debt consolidation at 12%, and now that money comes back in. Do you see what just happened here? From your one deposit of $10,000, that allowed the bank to make 
all these different transactions and collect on all of the principal. Now let's see how much more the bank made than we did. If we take the house transaction, they're charging that person 7% and they're paying you 4%. So 7% minus 4 is 3. Let's look at the car. They're charging 8% and giving you 4, so the difference is 4%. Now the house remodel, they're charging 9% and paying you 4, so the difference is 5. And now the debt consolidation, 12 minus 4 is 8 for a total of 20%. So the difference here is 20%. The bank made 20% and they paid you 4%. So if we take this a step further, let's figure out how much more the bank made than you made. So if the bank made 20% and you made 4%, how much more did they make than you? A lot of people say 16% because they subtract 20% minus 4. But I said, how much more did they make? We have to do a little bit of division. So let's remove these percent signs for a moment and let's change them to dollar signs. So if the bank made $20 and you made $4, they made five times the amount you did, right? Because if we do a little bit of division, 20 is five times more than 4. So that means the bank made 500% and they paid you 4%. So they're super generous. And guess what? This is actually on the low end of things because the banks make anywhere between 500 and 1800% off of your deposits on an annual basis. And this is all due to fractional banking. Darius and I joke that before we knew about infinite banking and fractional banking and just understanding the business of banking, we didn't care about what was happening to our deposits. We were just happy that the direct deposit hit Friday afternoon so that we could go eat out or go hang out with our friends. But when you put this into perspective and actually look behind the scenes of what's happening with your deposits, it is infuriating because the bank is literally taking on no risk. They're not even using their own money. They're using our deposits and they're using our deposits to become filthy rich and they're not cutting us in on the deal. The banks are the middlemen and they are super smart because they know how to work money. They very much rely on the fact that the consumers are not all going to come and request their money at the same time. So the bank is going to continue to turn your money and make more and more profits. Alrighty, so I hope this information was helpful and we have now empowered you so you understand how the banks make money. Mm -hmm. I know it's probably a little bit frustrating at this point that you've heard this information. I know we were mad when we heard about it, but at least now you know. Mm -hmm. um, so also, um, as you're going about your day, make sure that you expose this information and then that you share it with others because we wanna make sure that everyone understands what's going on with the financial industry mm -hmm. so that everyone can claim their independence. So be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notifications bell so that you're notified when we upload new videos. And make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at wealthnation.io. And remember to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.